Not long after its dedication in July 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge picked up a nickname, Galloping Gertie. Strong winds caused it to sway up and down and sideways. Instead of being frightened away, people came from everywhere to ride the roller coaster bridge. However, just four months after dedication, Galloping Gertie went down. Where Gertie went down, another bridge was built. Completed in 1950, it has stood the test of time. And it's doing what all bridges are supposed to do. It's getting people and their belongings to the other side. Nature provided the first bridges, fallen logs, stones, hanging vines. But these natural bridges were not always in the right place. So people cut down trees, wove vines together, or placed stepping stones in convenient locations. The invention of the wheel made it necessary to build longer and stronger bridges. The early Romans built bridges to move armies and establish trade throughout their empire. And their improvements greatly advanced the techniques of bridge building. During the centuries that followed, bridges were built throughout the kingdoms of Europe. Some of these magnificent bridges are still in use today. In America, during the 1800s, covered bridges were a familiar sight in town and countryside. Covered bridges were not only picturesque, they were practical. The roof protected the floor from water, which could rot the wood. The roof, however, could not protect them from their biggest enemy, fire. Up until the 1850s, most bridges were made of wood, stone, or rope. But with the coming of the railroad, bridges had to be made stronger and longer. At first, iron bridges seemed to be the answer. But iron had a tendency to crack. In America during the 1870s, an average of 40 bridges collapsed each year. From iron came steel, 
although it was made from iron, steel was much stronger. The first steel bridge in the world crossed the Mississippi River at St. Louis. Completed in 1874 and named after its builder, James Eads. People said it couldn't be built, said it wouldn't last, but the Eads Bridge still crosses the Mississippi at St. Louis. The Brooklyn Bridge, a steel bridge that took nearly 15 years to build. Completed in 1883, it was hailed as a tremendous engineering feat, a marvel of its time. As design and engineering improved, the size of steel bridges increased. In the 1930s, two very big steel bridges were built across San Francisco Bay. The Oakland Bay Bridge, built in two sections with an island in between. The Golden Gate Bridge, its graceful lines, striking color, and dramatic setting have made it one of the most photographed bridges in the world. Completed in 1957, the Mackinac Bridge connects Upper Michigan with Lower Michigan. Affectionately called Big Mac, it is one of the longest suspension bridges in the world. One of the highest bridges in the world spans the Royal Gorge of the Arkansas River. Wood, stone, rope, iron, and steel. In the early 1900s, another type of building material was introduced. Concrete reinforced with steel rods. Although not popular at first, it is now one of the most widely used building materials. Before there were automobiles, before there were paved roads, most bridges were built for trains. In the early 1900s, it took automobiles at least two months to drive from New York to San Francisco. But as cars increased in number, so did roads and highways and more roads and highways meant more bridges. In the 1950s, the four-lane interstate system created a real boom in bridge building. To a lesser degree, it is still going on today. Bridge building has a long history, yet from past to present, nearly all bridges have been built using three basic designs, beam, arch, and suspension. Like a fallen log, beam bridges rest on supports at each end. To make beam bridges stronger, triangles are added. A triangle shape is stronger and more stable than either a square or a rectangle. Beam bridges that have one or more triangles are called truss bridges. Beam bridges can be lengthened by placing supports underneath. These supports are called piers. If these piers are braced with trusses, it's called a trestle bridge. The cantilever is another variation of the beam bridge. Construction on a cantilever starts at the piers and then proceeds outward in both directions. The arch 
another basic design, is very strong and can withstand heavy loads. In nature, there are natural arches, sculptured by wind and sand. Stone arch bridges are built with wedge-shaped stones. These stones are placed on top of each other until the last one, the keystone, is set at the top of the arch. The first arch bridges had small openings. Later on, the arches were stretched. The openings were made wider and the columns thinner. This allowed water to flow more freely and permitted larger boats to pass underneath. Arch bridges can be lengthened by increasing the number of arches. They can be made of wood, steel, or reinforced concrete. The third basic design is the suspension bridge. The suspension bridge is similar to a spider's web. Like the threads in a spider web, suspension bridges are held together by strong cables. These cables are stretched over tall towers. Between the towers, they drape down toward the bridge deck. Steel suspenders attach the cables to the deck. The cables must also be anchored securely at each end of the bridge. A cross-section shows that this cable is not one, but thousands of small steel wires. If placed end-to-end, -end, the steel wires in the cables of the Golden Gate Bridge would circle the earth three times. Suspension bridges are often used to span deep or wide obstacles. On some bridges, the towers are nearly a mile apart. To keep it from sagging or swaying, steel trusses are placed on both sides of the bridge deck. Sometimes cables are used to help anchor the bridge deck from below. The deck on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was stiffened with solid plates. When these solid plates were hit by strong crosswinds, it created a roller coaster effect that led to its collapse. The Tacoma Narrows disaster taught bridge designers to eliminate solid surfaces that could catch strong crosswinds. Beam, arch, suspension, and pontoon. Although not as common, pontoon or floating bridges are another basic design. Pontoon bridges are often used in wartime for quick and temporary river crossings. In Seattle, Washington, however, there are two permanent floating bridges that span Lake Washington. When building bridges over fast-moving water, concrete piers must be set deep into the river bottom. First, concrete boxes called caissons are placed on the river bottom. These caissons have tubes through which mud and sand are removed. As mud and sand are removed, the caissons sink deeper and deeper into the river bottom. As the caisson sinks, new sections are placed on top until the first or lowest caisson rests on solid ground. After the caissons are filled with concrete, they become the piers that will support the bridge. A finished bridge, of course, is never really finished. Bridges require regular maintenance. This includes repairs and painting. As bridges become old or obsolete, 
They're sometimes replaced by new ones. Sometimes they are abandoned. Sometimes destroyed. In rare instances, old bridges are removed piece by piece and reassembled in a different location. This bridge once crossed the Thames River in London, England. Removed and rebuilt, a London bridge now crosses the Colorado River at Lake Havasu, Arizona. Where bridges now stand, the chances are good that ferry boats once crossed the river nearby. There are still many of them in use today, crossing the Mississippi, crossing its tributaries, crossing San Francisco Bay. The Washington State Ferries are moving bridges. They connect the city of Seattle with islands in Puget Sound, the Olympic Peninsula, and Victoria, Canada. Unlike stationary bridges, ferry boats are not potential barriers to river traffic, and they help reduce traffic congestion on bridges. Bridges that cross heavily used waterways must be built high enough for all ships to clear, or they must be built to move. Bridges are also used to transport water, chemicals. They support light rail systems. And along with being useful, they can add charm, beauty, and tranquility to a picturesque setting. Bridges have been the focal point of songs, movies, literature. Bridge building isn't limited to professionals. At a weekend retreat, Boy Scouts put up temporary bridges, bridges of all types. It's a learning experience and fun for participants. Structures, a traveling exhibit sponsored by the Franklin Institute of Science, provides a hands-on approach to the scientific principles involved in bridge construction. Bridges are everywhere. Everywhere you go, there are bridges.
bridges are so common that we often take them for granted. They get our attention only when they become an inconvenience. Bridges are all around you. Beam, arch, suspension, big and small, plain and pretty. And they're doing what bridges are supposed to do. They're getting people and their belongings to the other side.